Today I'm sharing 50 ways to make your home and outdoors look expensive on a budget. We'll be doing DIYs and I'll share design, trends, and tips. So let's get started with number one. Lighting is the jewelry of the room. You can find beautiful chandeliers that really make an impact. Plus, adding light to a room brightens up the space and makes it feel so much larger. You can incorporate decorative fixtures in so many different ways. Of course, we've got our hanging lights, the chandeliers. Those are the showstoppers of the room. You can find lighting for so cheap. You can look on Amazon, you can look on Walmart website, you can look on Facebook Marketplace. All kinds of places have beautiful lighting for an affordable cost. I also have wall sconces in my living room and I absolutely love these. These are a nice, soft light that brings a glow from the side. These instantly make this room look more upscale and refined. You can add layers of light too, meaning you've got, of course, your chandeliers or your light fixtures coming from above, but you can also use task lighting in the form of lamps. I purchased these lamps at Home Goods. They were really affordable. Home Goods has great prices on lamps and they have such a huge variety. So hit up Ross or Home Goods or those places to find some beautiful lamps for an affordable price. Another tip for lighting is I have a few of mine on dimmers and it's so fun to be able to up the lighting, but dim it at night, add a special ambiance to your room. Dimming these lights can create a cozy, luxurious atmosphere in any room. So by simply switching out some of the lighting in your home or adding more lighting, you can enhance the atmosphere of your home. Next is to add some beautiful textiles to your space. I love drapes. Beautiful drapes can just add a soft, cozy, elegant feel to the room. I love the textures. These drapes right here are velvet, but I also have some linen drapes in my house and the textures in each of the rooms soften the windows. You can also use different patterns or vibrant colors to create a custom look. Additionally, by adding heavier custom drapes to a space, it makes it feel elegant and polished and very cozy. Another textile are pillows. I love pillows. I have them all over my house. I love the way they make a room feel. I have a whole bunch of pillows right here on my bed. I add them every single morning and they just give this room a cozy feel. Pillows add texture and depth to the overall look of a room, creating an expensive visual feel. Pillows can be used to introduce color or a pattern. You can switch them out from different seasons or holidays. Maybe you're feeling like you wanna use a vibrant color one day or a more muted color the next. The way that you can keep pillows affordable is you don't need to buy a different pillow every single time. You can buy pillow coverings and just use the same pillow and switch them out with the pillow coverings. That is a great way to save money. I find some of the best pillows at Home Goods. They have a huge variety and they're very affordable. So you can go to Home Goods, you can go to Ross, you can go to any home decor store and they're gonna have a variety of pillows for you to choose from at an affordable price. Some other textiles that you can add to your room to make it feel more luxurious are rugs. In your bathroom, you can get some really soft, luxurious towels. These pieces can make your home look like a million bucks. The next way that we can make our home look expensive on a budget is with a fireplace. You might be wondering, how can I afford that? Well, I thought the same thing. I was like, I'm not gonna put a fireplace in my bedroom. It's way too expensive, but guess what? We did it and we did it on a budget. Now, a fireplace in a home just changes the atmosphere. It makes it feel so warm and cozy and the mantles just make everything look so elegant and beautiful. So how do we make it affordable? Well, I am using an electric insert. This is an affordable way to get a fireplace in a specific area in your home because you don't have to do anything but attach it to the wall and plug it in. 
So what I'm gonna do with mine, instead of just putting it on the wall, which you can do, is I'm going to make a fireplace mantle. So I started off by hitting up Lowe's. I went there and I got all the lumber that I needed. I got my two by fours and I got a whole bunch of trim because I wanted this to look sleek, elegant, and beautiful. Brought everything home and I just got shopping. I got my miter saw out and I started cutting everything down to size. I would say that the hardest part about making this was the actual design of it. You can see all of my like hand-drawn <laughs> pictures with all my measurements on it. So yeah, so you've gotta do some math, but beyond that, it's really easy to do. After I had my frame built, I got some wood paneling and I put it around the fireplace frame. And now it's time for the pretty part. I got my trim and I cut all the pieces that I needed to put on my fireplace. Once all those pieces were cut, I busted out my nail gun and I attached everything together. Now that my fireplace is created, I need to caulk it and fill in all of those nail holes. Once it was done, I gave it one final wash and then I took it out to my garage where I had created a makeshift paint shop with a whole bunch of tarps. Now I'm going to be painting my fireplace mantle with some bare polar bear paint and I get the cabinet grade because I like how it gives us good coverage, but it is also great for being able to wipe it down later because it's used for cabinets. I sprayed my fireplace mantle and I did four coats. I wanted to make sure that everything was sufficiently coated in this paint. I wanted it to look professional and by using a paint sprayer, I always get a professional look. Once I was finished with my fourth coat of paint, I let it dry overnight. Now it's time to bring my fireplace mantle into my bedroom. Now you guys, I built this thing, but I built it on the ground and I had my boys take it out to the garage and now it weighs like, <laughs> this thing weighs probably close to 200 pounds. So I had to enlist the help of my husband and my twins to bring it back into the room because it was too heavy for me to carry. Now it's time to add my electric insert to my fireplace. This was so easy. I unboxed it from the packaging that I came in. It was packaged beautifully. And all I needed to do was remove a few screws to take off the front glass plate. And then I pushed the fireplace into the fireplace mantle. It slid right in. So I'm pretty proud of my measurements because it went right in. It was nice and snug. And then all I needed to do was take some screws that were provided and screw this electric insert into my fireplace mantle. I cannot even tell you how much I love this fireplace in this room. It is so pretty and it gives off a beautiful warm glow to this space. This fireplace is now the centerpiece of my bedroom. I absolutely love it. And I'm so happy that I was able to do it for an affordable price. Neutral wall colors like a gray or a beige or a white are a beautiful way to make your home look and feel expensive. The light colors on the walls can make your space actually feel larger than it is. And since neutral colors provide a modern and calming atmosphere, they can add sophistication to your home and make it appear more expensive. Paint is also so affordable and anyone can paint. And if you don't feel like you can, have a paint party, have your friends over, have your family over, have some rollers for them. You'll have your home or a room painted in a jiffy. Another thing that you can add to your walls to make it feel luxurious is some wallpaper. You can find some wallpaper that's really affordable on Amazon. You can find wallpaper that has texture on it, which adds a luxurious feel to a room. Bringing in plants or flowers into your home is an immediate way to make it look more expensive. And flowers and plants are not that expensive. 
especially if you get artificial ones like I do. I do not have a green thumb. That's one thing about me. I, I just can't keep anything alive. So I definitely opt for my beautiful faux florals. I make flower arrangements and I have them all over my home. I get my flowers at Michael's or at home. Hobby Lobby has very affordable ones and you can get them on sale. I hardly ever buy my flowers without using a coupon or having it be 50% off that specific week. So you can get flowers or plants or any kind of greenery on sale for an affordable price. And I love the way that it makes my rooms feel. You can get more streamlined flowers like orchids that make your room look luxurious and expensive. But in reality, you really didn't spend that much on the actual stem of the flower to create it. Also, the containers that I put my flowers in are usually from the thrift store or I recycled it from another project. I typically go for the neutral flower arrangement, but it is fun to switch it up for the different seasons and holidays. You can use some amber colors in the fall, some red poinsettias at Christmas, some springtime pastels or some bright summer flowers and you can do it very affordably. Next, let's talk about artwork and mirrors. I have mirrors all over my home. I love the way that they reflect light back into the room. I love the way that they make the room feel bigger. I love that they reflect things that are on the opposite wall or the chandeliers that are up above. Large mirrors can make a statement. I have two very large mirrors here in my bedroom that are right above the nightstands and they make this room feel so grand. The majority of the mirrors that I have in my home, I purchased at my thrift store. They were not in the best condition, but I saw that they had potential. I didn't spend more than $50 on any of the mirrors that I purchased at my thrift store. You can find beautiful mirrors at your thrift store, look on Facebook Marketplace. You can go to some garage sales. There's a lot of places that you can look to find some mirrors at an affordable price. Now, I also wanna talk about artwork. I think artwork can make or break a space as well. Artwork can make your home look expensive because it adds character and personality to a space. Artwork can be used to show off the homeowner style, to create focal points and make statements in the room. Art enhances the look of any space. It also can add richness and texture to a room. It can also increase the perceived value of a home as it suggests elegance, sophistication, and class. Next, let's talk about home accessories. Home accessories can make your home look so elegant without breaking the bank. You can go to Ross, Home Goods all kinds of other home decor stores and find some beautiful home accessories and display them in your home. I love using candles and books, small sculptures, beautiful vases, ginger jar. Do you guys know I love a ginger jar? I have them all over my house. All of these small details can make your home look expensive and put together without costing too much money. Another way to make your home look expensive is by adding a natural stone. Now, you might think, how am I gonna add a natural stone to my space? It's really expensive to put in a backsplash or to change out your flooring or, you know, etc. So how I bring stone into a space is with these marble tiles that I buy at Lowe's. They're $10 a tile, they're so pretty, and I put them on top of my nightstands you can put them on top of your side tables, on top of a buffet. It immediately elevates the look of these pieces because you've added a high-end material to your nightstand. And it also gives these pieces a classic timeless look. It also comes in a variety of colors and designs that will match any decor style. Marble lasts a long time and it doesn't need to be switched out very often. It's hard, it's scratch resistant. It's a very practical and cost effective choice to make your home feel luxurious. The easiest and most affordable way to make your home look luxurious is by decluttering. A tidy home will always look more luxurious than a cluttered one. 
Do you ever walk into a home and it's clean and tidy and it just feels good, doesn't it? It doesn't have to be a huge home, it can be a small home, but if it's clean, it has an elegant feel to it. So declutter and reorganize, get out all those things that you don't need in your home anymore. This can help your home look more put together and elegant. The one thing that can really make your kitchen shine is accessorizing. It doesn't have to be a big part of your budget either, but in my mind, it's what adds that personality and charm. I created a few displays. I have this one right here on my center island, and I placed a large marble tray, and then on top I have an urn, a small flower arrangement, and a candle. Underneath my cabinets over here, I created two small floral arrangements, which I placed on top of a marble cutting board. And then on top of my stove, I added a mirror tray with a glass tear tray covered in a cloche, and I added some tasty croissants. You can add some fresh flowers, a chopping board, fruit. You can get a decorative bowl and add some apples and bananas inside. So don't underestimate the power of food when decorating. Decorative dishes or a mug could be a great accessory as well. Lighting is a great way to upgrade your kitchen and you don't have to break the bank to find some fabulous options. Now, if you know me by now, you know that I love gold. And so I selected these large gold pendant lights that go over my island. They really bring a touch of sophistication to this space. They're oversized and they bring an amazing amount of light. Large scale lighting tricks your eye and makes you feel like you're in a larger space. These two large pendant lights are a much bigger wow factor than some smaller pendant lights would be. I also added some lights inside of my glass cabinet drawers, which illuminate that space, highlight all the pieces that are inside of the cabinets, and it adds a lovely ambient light. And finally, I added some sconces on either side of my refrigerator. When a room has multiple light sources, it feels more elevated. And here's a quick design tip. If possible, put your lights on dimmers because then you can create a beautiful ambiance simply by upping the light or dimming it. Next, we're gonna talk about incorporating seating areas into your kitchen. Having a seating area can really elevate your kitchen. I have four bar stools that go right underneath my center island. If you have a breakfast nook or a raised bar, bar stools are a great way to incorporate another design element. There's not a whole lot of design that you can do in a kitchen or bringing in a statement piece, but a bar stool is a great way to do it. You can incorporate different kinds of colors or textures into your bar stools. And there are so many options to choose from. You can really drive yourself crazy looking for the perfect bar stool. I spent so much time trying to find mine, but I found some really great affordable ones that work perfectly in my space. The next way to upgrade your kitchen is simply by switching out your hardware. This is an easy fix. It can update your kitchen cabinets. New hardware is a quick and easy way to refresh your kitchen. I absolutely love these large gold and lucite poles. I have these poles in a large size. I also have them in a smaller size on my lower cabinets. It looks crisp and clean and it adds a little bit more glam to this space. I also have some crystal and gold knobs, which enhance the more expensive look I'm trying to achieve. Next, we're gonna be layering in some faux flowers or greenery. Adding in flowers or greenery into a space can really make it feel alive. It adds pattern, texture, and color. I love decorating with flowers, both real and faux. The faux plants and florals these days can look and feel so realistic. 
So what I did was I created this small flower arrangement for my center island, and then I did two smaller arrangements underneath each of my cabinets. I had some white ones underneath my cabinets for Christmas, but since spring is on the way, I thought I would switch it out for some pretty roses and some pink peonies. I easily created these floral arrangements and I used some kitchen bowls as my base. And then for this one, I used a small jar. This is just the bottom part of a jar. I took off the lid and I used it as a base. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use just what you have around the house as containers for some beautiful plants or florals. Next, we're gonna talk about countertops. Now, swapping out your countertop can get really pricey, so if that's not in your budget, I have a couple small solutions that will work for you. First, I have all of these marble trays around my kitchen. So I have this one right here underneath my floral arrangements. It's just these small little cutting boards. I got them from Ross and they were $6.99 a piece. That is an extremely affordable way to bring in some marble, a high class material into your space. I also have this Marble Lazy Susan. I purchased it at Home Goods and it was around $30. So just by bringing in some marble accessories, you can get the look of marble, the feel of marble, and the elegance of a stone without spending a ton of money. Next, let's talk about paint. If you cannot rip out your cabinets, painting them can be a great solution. My kitchen remodel began with some wood cabinets and I just did not like the color, but it would have been so expensive to rip them out and start over again. So I actually kept the vast majority of my cabinets, especially all of the lower cabinets, and I simply just painted them. I used some bare polar bear white paint Painting these cabinets just brightened up this space dramatically. It also gave it a fresh feel and it updated it to a more modern and contemporary style. By reusing my existing cabinets and repainting them, I saved thousands of dollars. And while we're on the topic of cabinets, let's talk about taking everything to the ceiling. By running your cabinets, all the way to the ceiling, it makes your space feel so much larger. I added a thick crown molding to the top of my cabinets in order to close that gap. When you pay a little extra to get cabinets that go to the ceiling, it makes all the difference in the world. Plus you don't get that weird space above the cabinets where you're like, well, I don't know what to do. Should I add a faux plant? You know, and it just ends up being a dust collector. So you don't have to worry about decorating that space either. Another thing that I did was I ran my backsplash all the way to the ceiling as well. Anytime you take your backsplash all the way to the ceiling, it draws your eye up and it makes your space feel much more grand. Okay guys, now we're gonna talk about the cheapest and easiest tip that I could give you. And I guarantee you, you already know about it. And that is to keep your space clean. Easier said than done, right? No matter the size, the shape, the style of your kitchen, if you walk into a space that's clean, it feels luxurious. Here is one simple and easy cleaning tip I can give you. Try and keep dishes out of your sink. Just, just one thing, just one tip. Just when you're done with your dishes, wash them, put them in the dishwasher or put them away. This one tip will make your space feel clean almost all of the time. Decluttering is also free, but can make a huge impact on the way your space feels. Sometimes the kitchen can be the catch-all for everything in the house. Do you have those drawers that you try and open and it's just jam-packed with either just, you know, those potato mashers or a whole bunch of spoons and utensils that you don't use anymore? or just clutter that's in the cabinet, all kinds of papers and et cetera, clean it out. If you do that, your anxiety will go down a lot more. When you go and try and open that cabinet the next time, donate, throw away, just get rid of the things that you don't need anymore. I promise by doing that, your kitchen will feel so much more 
inviting, and luxurious. If you can switch out your faucet from an older faucet to a newer updated version, it will make a huge difference. I swapped mine out for this tall curved neck. It adds a bit of sophistication and elegance to the space. And you don't need to spend an arm and a leg to do it. You can find some really affordable options at Home Depot or Lowe's, and they are so pretty. I love the designs that they have nowadays. So if you can't swap out your sink or swap out any of the other things, you can upgrade your kitchen by just swapping out your faucet. My next tip is to use rugs. It seems like everybody nowadays is switching out their carpet for a solid surface and you can't blame them because they are beautiful options when it comes to flooring. However, they can feel a little stark and cold. So to warm them up, a rug is a great way to add some color, some warmth, and some texture to a space. In the majority of the main floor in my home, we have tile. And to make it feel softer and warmer, I have added rugs. Rugs are also a great way that you can incorporate some accent colors. I have brought in a lot of my accent colors in the form of rugs. You can draw off the colors that are in the rugs and add them to your accessories, your pillows, your drapery. So really draw off the colors in your rug and incorporate them into your space. Even if you have carpet, you can add a rug over the top. That's what I've done in my formal living area. It's a carpeted room, but I added a beautiful rug to the center. And by adding a rug to this space, it gives it an extra layer of coziness. To go along with pillows, we've got to have some throws. And I have several throws that I put on couches throughout the house. I really love using throws because they add another element of a soft texture. Throw blankets create warmth, literally and figuratively. Throw blankets are also a great way to add color to your space. I use blankets in a couple of different ways. Mainly I just put them on my couches, but here are some other options. You've all seen those blanket ladders. You can just drape a cozy throw blanket over one of those. You can put them in a large basket and put it on your fireplace or close to a chair or a couch to display them that way. And then also you can put them on the foot of the bed. So there's a lot of ways that you can incorporate throw blankets into your decor to keep everything warm and cozy. A statement piece in a room. You could choose a bold rug. You could do a large chandelier, a big piece of artwork, a large mirror a unique piece of furniture. So when you first walk in, that's the piece that stands out. What this does is it adds a visual interest to a room and gives personality to your space. But it can also create a sense of balance and cohesion in a room. It can tie together other design elements. It can also be a great conversation starter. Everybody wants to know about that unique piece in your room that's unique and different from other pieces that they've seen in other homes. It's what makes you unique, your personality stand out, and it gives a glimpse into your design sense. So add a statement piece to your room. It's a smart investment that can enhance both the aesthetic and functional aspects of your room. Next, we're gonna talk about mixing and matching, which is one of my favorite things to do. I love using more traditional pieces juxtaposed with contemporary items. For instance, I have some modern lighting that goes along with some more traditional seating. You can have some traditional accessories next to more modern accessories. You can have a traditional couch and have a more modern ottoman or coffee table. You can choose to Go with a traditional faucet if they have a more modern cabinet style. I think mixing and matching design styles gives your space personality. Next, let's talk about updating your furniture. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and buy some new furniture because that can definitely break the bank. I'm just going to show you what I did to update an old piece of furniture that I had. Now, I've had this buffet for over 10 years. I bought it off Facebook Marketplace. It was 
under $200, so it was a deal back then. It has been loved. It has definitely been used. It's got some scratches on it now. It's got some dings. It's definitely been loved, and it is a worn out piece. I also don't love this dark mahogany color. It's really heavy on this side of the room. Your eyes just kind of drawn over here because of how dark this piece is. And so I want to brighten it up so it goes along better with my overall design sense and makes everything cohesive in this room. So what we're going to do with this piece is take it outside and I'm going to begin by sanding it down. So I got my sander and I began to sand the top. And then I realized that this was a very big job. And so I needed to recruit some help. So I asked my sweet twins to come and help me, which they did. They're so good. And they helped me to sand down the rest of the buffet and the drawers. Now there were these twisted Tuscan style half columns that were on either side of the buffet. And while I have enjoyed this detail in the past, I'm trying to update my piece and make it look a little more modern and streamlined. So these beauties have to go. So I got a chisel and I chiseled them off. They're just glued on, so they popped off fairly easily. And as a replacement, I got some one by fours and I cut those down to size with my miter saw. Then I got some decorative trim. This is a thinner trim and I cut those down to size as well. Then I got my nail gun and I nailed the one by fours into place. And then for the thinner trim, what I'm gonna do is use some liquid nails. Because I cut those pieces to fit in there really tight, they stay in place anyways, so adding the liquid nails will adhere it tightly to the buffet, but I also did not want to put any nail holes in this trim because then I would have had to fill it with wood putty and I didn't want to do that. So the liquid nails is perfect for adhering these pieces together. And then finally I took some caulk and I caulked along the edges of the pieces of trim. Now it's time to wash the whole thing down. We want it clean before we paint it. So I got some crud cutter and I wiped down the buffet itself and also all of the drawers. Now it's time to paint it. So I made a makeshift paint shop out in my garage with some tarps and then I got some bare polar bear cabinet paint and my paint sprayer. I love using a paint sprayer. I think it gives your piece a professional look. So I did four coats of paint on the buffet and four coats of paint on the drawer fronts. And painting it white makes it look already a million times better than that dark stain. To update it even further, I'm going to swap out the knobs. Before they were these big, round, chunky knobs. I thought they were too big for the particular drawers. And I also wanted to update them into a more modern style. So what I did was I headed over to Hobby Lobby and luckily for me, all of the knobs and the poles were 50% off. I found this rectangular marble knob that has some gold detail to it. So pretty. They were originally $7 a piece, but luckily for me, they were half off. So $3.50 was the cost, which was great because I needed 11 of them. So we're keeping costs down by buying things on sale. And then I just added these knobs straight onto the front of the doors. The hardware makes this piece feel so luxurious. The white marble is a high-end material. It goes along with our color scheme in this room, as well as the gold accents match perfectly with all the other gold in this space. So now we're finished. Are you ready for the big reveal? Well, here it is. I love the way that this looks now. It is so light and bright. It's much more modern because we added streamlined details like the new trim and the knobs. The white paint color brightens up the space now. It doesn't feel dark and heavy like it did before. It's a light bright piece that makes this room feel so much larger. This piece definitely needed a makeover. It's done its duty for 10 years, but now with a 
more modern transformation, I'll be able to use it for the next 10 years. We also transformed this very affordably. All we did was spend money on the paint and on the new hardware. So by repurposing an old piece, we are able to save money, update our space and make it look so much more luxurious. I have a very dear friend that many of you know that has the exact same buffet that I do. So I thought it was a great decision to bring her in and get her reaction when she sees my newly updated one. Okay. Come on, oh, look who it is. It's Natalie. <laughs> Hi everybody. Oh my word. Yeah. This looks amazing. It's like so much more like contemporary looking. Right? And I'm, not rustic. I love what you did here. The, trim, the trim, right? And then these knobs. Where did you get these? I got those at Hobby Lobby. Dude, they're awesome. Crazy, right? It looks completely different. I know. It makes me want to go home and do mine. <laughs> <laughs> I love using neutral drapes in my rooms. The reason why is, again, because they are so timeless and so classic but they bring a light, bright feeling to a space. And by using a neutral drape, it will be able to enhance any other color that you have in the space. It will just kind of disappear, which is what we want it to do. Neutral drapes offer a classic, elegant look that can last for years. I've opted to go with some light tan drapes in the majority of my spaces. And the reason why I do that is so that it creates a peaceful and relaxing ambiance. These neutral drapes create a comfortable and serene atmosphere. What you can do with neutral drapes is use different types of textures. I have some linen drapes and I also have some velvet drapes. The different fabrics that you can choose for drapes is how you can put your stamp on a neutral piece. You can get some shiny silk du peony drapes that give your space an elegant look. You can choose a cotton drape that will give you a more casual look. So you can choose neutral drapes, but you can still give it personality by using different textures on your drapes. Another way that you can make your home look expensive is by bringing in natural light. Super simple, right? All you need to do, pull back those drapes, pull up the blinds, let that natural light come in. I know that you've all been to homes that are flooded with natural light and it has such a warm feel to it. It looks expensive because everything is well lit. The natural light creates an open airy ambiance. A well lit room with natural light can make even the smallest space look bigger and more spacious. And also having natural light in your space can boost your mood and energy. So that's one benefit besides having a beautiful design sense. We always want more energy, right? We want to boost our mood and be happier. So bring in that natural light as much as you can. If you're not able to add natural light to your space, you can brighten things up by swapping out a light fixture to a brighter one. You can add some floor lamps or some table lamps to brighten up a space as well. So there are ways to make your home light and bright. Adding texture to rooms by layering the luxurious materials is a great way to give yourself a high-end look. For instance, you can get some luxurious throws or some beautiful pillows with some gorgeous designs on it and layer them on top of each other. I have a throw on my couch and I've got all kinds of pillows that I put over the top. So I have soft materials that look warm and inviting. You can also do this with wood. You can get wood trays and you can add them on top of your ottoman. You can add them on top of your table. Right over here, I have some vignettes that I have layered with all kinds of different materials. I have a marble tray at the bottom. I've got some ginger jars and I have some metal acanthus leaves. By layering these different materials, it gives you a more luxurious feel. By layering textures, you can tie together different elements in a room, such as furniture, textiles, and accessories. It creates a cohesive and intentional look. Now, speaking of all these accessories, let's talk about how you can swap out your old dated accessories 
for some modern, timeless, sophisticated pieces. What I love to use are ginger jars and natural elements, florals. Timeless decor pieces have classic designs, which means that they will not go out of style. And they can be used in a variety of different settings and color schemes. Timeless decor can give your home a sense of sophistication, which in turn makes it feel so much more luxurious and polished, which can elevate the overall aesthetic of your home. Another tip I'm gonna give you is go big when it comes to accessories. Get some big pieces that make a statement. It's better to have large pieces and fewer of them than to have a whole bunch of small pieces that can get lost or look disheveled. So get some big pieces that make a statement when it comes to accessories. Swapping out cheap accessories for timeless home decor is a great way to add value to your home and create a more elegant and refined look that will stand the test of time. I would recommend choosing some neutral, high quality bedding for several reasons. You want your room to feel comfortable, warm, and cozy when you walk in. Neutral bedding creates a calming and cohesive look in the bedroom. A neutral color palette creates a sense of tranquility and can also make a room feel more relaxing, which is beneficial for promoting a good night's sleep, which is what we're all trying to achieve, right? So get some neutral bedding and pair it with a variety of different decor styles. You can choose some bright pops of colors when it comes to your pillows. You can choose a different color throw. So you can incorporate color, but I would just stick to neutral bedding like your duvet, your bedspread, the majority of your shams, and then add pops of color here and there if you want to add those pops of color. I love using just neutrals. I like creams, tans, whites, and the colors together look sophisticated. They look classic, timeless, just what we're trying to achieve in our home. Here is an interior design trend for 2023, and that is to mix and match metals. Blending different metal finishes such as brass and nickel to create a layered, sophisticated look is what's in right now. Using different metals can create depth, visual interest, and a sense of dimensionality to a room. Combining different metal finishes in home decor can also bring a sense of richness and warmth to a space. You can have accessories next to each other that are all different kinds of metal types. Those look beautiful. I have a more antique light fixture in my dining room and I have gold fixtures in my living room. They still go together because they have that same traditional lines, but because they are different finishes, it makes your space look like it's unique, like it's custom. Mixing and matching metals is a great way to make your home look expensive because you're giving yourself a custom look, a look that not many other people have. When you're looking at buying large pieces of furniture, try and keep it neutral. The reason why we want to do that is if you buy a large piece of furniture, you're going to obviously spend a lot of money. So you're going to want that piece to last. As we know, designs come and go, but if you buy something that is neutral, you'll be able to have it fit in with each of the changing styles. You can dress up or dress down pieces of neutral furniture. You can get bold pops of color with pillows and throws. You're also gonna to wanna to choose a classic design that will not go out of style. Choosing something that has clean lines or a minimalist feel. Here's another interior design trend for 2023. Curved furniture is in, so round ottomans, round tables, those beautiful curved lines are what's popular this year. The round edges add softness and flow to a space. Another way that you can make your home look luxurious is by adding some architectural details to your home. Now, typically this would be a very expensive thing to do, but you can buy trim at Lowe's and Home Depot so affordably. I've been able to add some decorative trim to my bedroom and to my dining room. You can buy pre-cut pieces nowadays where all you need to do is just peel off the back and stick it on the wall. 
adding these architectural details make your space look custom and so unique. If you really want to splurge, you can add some wainscoting or some columns for a more dramatic effect. It makes your home look luxurious, high-end, expensive, because it is unique and special and custom to you and your home. It doesn't matter if you have a small patio or a large backyard, these ideas are going to work across the board and it's gonna help your backyard area feel so luxurious. So we're gonna start off by dressing our outdoor dining table. I love having a dining table outside so what we're gonna do with our table, first of all, is that we need to wash it because it's been out here for a while and it's dirty, it's dusty, it needs to be cleaned. So I'm gonna wipe it down really well and now it's prepped and ready for us to set the table. You can go in so many directions when you set an outdoor table. What I'm gonna do is put some placemats down and a runner. These are gold and they're geometric, they're really bright and airy for summertime. On top of my placemats, I'm going to put some plates. These are white plates with a silver rim around it. And then in the center of those plates, I'm going to place a shell plate. These are adorable. I got them at Michael's a couple years ago and I love the way they look. They really bring in that outdoor summer fun element. On top of that, I have some cloth napkins. They're teal and sea blue, just perfect for the look that I'm going for. And I put a gold napkin ring around these napkins and place them in the center of the shell plate. And then of course, we've got our cups and our cutlery that we're placing on each place setting. And then for our centerpiece, I'm going to be using two lanterns with some battery operated candles in them and a white floral arrangement in the center. And just like that, look how elevated this dining table looks. Being outside gives you that opportunity to get that fresh air in. You've got beautiful scenery. Dining outside is also perfect if you have a whole lot of guests because you can just pull up chairs and people can be wandering about and you have that extra space to entertain. I also love the change of scenery from dining inside to dining outside. It gives you a little bit of a variety being in nature and enjoying a meal outdoors can help you feel more relaxed and calm. Plus, I can have the fountains on in the background and I love listening to the sound of the water trickling into the pool. It definitely elevates the entire dining experience. My next tip is to have several different conversation areas. I have, of course, this dining table right here where people can sit and eat and enjoy each other's conversation, but I also have a love seat and two chairs with a coffee table where people can sit and relax and stay there for hours and hours and hours. And then I have a more intimate seating arrangement over by the hot tub. I've got two chairs over there where you can have a quiet one-on-one -on -one conversation. You're gonna to wanna to measure your space before you go buy your furniture. That way you know that it's the right size. It's not too big, it's not too small. You're also gonna to wanna to get comfortable furniture because hopefully like me, you like to spend a lot of time outside and you wanna be comfortable while you're doing it. And along with that, you wanna make sure you have really durable outdoor fabrics on your furniture. Another way that makes your outdoor space feel so luxurious is by using a fire pit or some kind of fire element. I love the way the warmth of the fire glows in your space. It illuminates things, and it also can bring warmth to your space, which can extend your outdoor living season. If it can warm you up just a little bit, that means you can stay out there even longer. It creates a cozy and warm atmosphere, so you can sit and chat for hours and hours and hours with your friends and your family. It also, of course, provides light, which is fantastic when you're outside, especially at night. I personally do not have a fire pit in my backyard, but I have done something to get that same fire element in the past. I headed to the Dollar Tree and I got some food warmers for chafing dishes and I got a wooden box and I filled it with some rocks and then I put these food warmers in the box and then I made some s'more sticks. I put together a little s'more station with all kinds of chocolates and cookies and marshmallows it was such a fun event for my kids. In fact, we have used it time and time again for parties or when the kids have friends over. 
It's a way to get a fire element and also a s'more station for just a few dollars. So if you don't have a budget for a fire pit right now, this is a great alternative. Fire definitely gives us an ambient glow, but let's talk about some other ways that we can bring in some lighting in our outdoor space. The first one is with some lanterns. I've got this big one right here that I have a candle inside, and then I have the lanterns that are on my dining table. I've also put lanterns on my front porch before. Instead of putting candles inside, I put flowers inside. This was such a fun alternative because I love having flowers that brighten up a space in summertime, especially outdoors. So swapping a candle for a floral arrangement in this instance was such a fun idea. Lanterns are also really great to have outside because they are typically made with a durable material so they can withstand all of the elements. Another item that I have used in the past are some string lights. I don't have any up right now, but I think that they are so fun, especially for a party in the summer. You can buy string lights at all of the major stores. I found some great ones at Target. They come in a variety of different sizes and you can string them up all over the place. You can wrap them around a tree. You can wrap them around a column outside. You can put them on an umbrella. There are so many ways that you can bring in these adorable string lights into a place and it makes your outdoors feel so magical. Like when you go to a restaurant and they have lights hanging everywhere. Well, these lights give you that same affect that same feeling. Of course, you have to talk about candles when we're talking about ambient lighting and they go along really well with lanterns because you can put candles inside of your lanterns. I have a large candle inside of this lantern right here and then I also have some battery operated candles in my lanterns that are on my dining table. Another thing about candles is that you can get some citronella candles that will keep those bugs away when you're outside. You can also get a candle that has a tropical scent so you feel like you're on a tropical vacation somewhere and smelling the pina coladas. Another way that you can entertain beautifully outside is by bringing a little bit of the inside outdoors. What I have is this gorgeous bar cart that I have wheeled outside and it's going to be a great place to put my drinks and some snacks. On top of my bar cart, I have a bowl that I filled with ice. Now, if you don't have an ice bucket, just get one of your large kitchen bowls, fill it up with some ice and then put your drinks inside. I put in some peach flavored sparkling water and then I also have some cookies that I put on top of a cake stand and covered with a cloche. And then I also have this towel right here so that people can dry their hands off once they get their water out of the ice bucket. Sometimes it's a little wet. So this is a great idea. You can hang up a towel. And of course it's so convenient because you can just kind of wheel it back and forth, bring it over there, bring it over there. You can have snacks that you can serve to everybody. So a bar cart really is a fun item to take outside, use it during a party, and then you can put it back inside when you're finished. Potted plants and flowers are another way to make your outdoor space feel so tropical and lush. Now, for many of you that know me and have been with me for a while, you know that I am no gardener. <laughs> I cannot keep anything alive. And by the good graces of the Florida sunshine and the rain, I have some flowers that have been alive for a very long time, no thanks to me. But if you are a gardener, I can imagine that your space would be beautifully decorated with all kinds of potted plants and flowers. Using flowers are a great way to bring in a bright pop of color. You can select flowers in a theme, you can go with a sunset theme or a spring theme or a neutral theme. You can stick to one type of flower or you can choose a variety of different flowers and plants. Another thing that I love about potted plants and flowers is that they are low maintenance and that you can move them around from place to place. So if you don't want this potted plant here, you can move it to another location. If you're gonna have a big rainstorm, you can bring those potted plants inside. And they're also a great space saver because you can get a variety of different sized pots. I have some large ones here, but you can get some smaller ones. You can buy some at the Dollar Tree that are really affordable. You can get some at Target or Walmart and they have beautiful shapes. There's so many different designs that you can choose when it comes to choosing a container for your plants. 
So add a little bit of personality to your backyard by choosing some potted plants or flowers to beautify the space. So if you're like me and gardening isn't your strong suit, what you can do is bring some artificial flowers outside as well. Don't be ashamed, I do it all the time. And there are really some great benefits to using some faux flowers outside. Number one is that they're really durable, so you can leave them outside and you know that they're not gonna get ruined. These are a very low maintenance, which is my favorite thing. I don't have to water them. I don't have to worry about bringing them in and out of the sun i just leave them in this beautiful container and they are self-sufficient which is perfect for my lifestyle another thing is that they are really cost effective you can buy some really affordable faux flowers they will last long term and they do not need to be replaced frequently and you can easily change these out seasonally you could do some beautiful fall leaves you could do all kinds of things for different changing holidays and seasons and then when you're done with your party or your entertaining evening, you can bring these flowers back inside and put them where they belong. Next, let's talk about pillows and textiles. I love the warmth that textiles bring to an outdoor space. We're gonna start off by talking about rugs. Rugs are fantastic in an outdoor area. It can define a seating area we are also a shoes off kind of family during the summer, so it's nice to have a rug to step on and have that relief from the concrete. Rugs are also a great way to bring in some pattern or color into your space. If you have a specific color scheme that you're going for, a rug is a great way to introduce that color or reinforce that color in your outdoor space. You can even coordinate your outdoor space with your indoor space through rugs. Rugs are also super durable and you can get them in so many different places, especially right now, and you can buy some extremely affordably. Another textile that I love using in my outdoor space are pillows. I've got these blue pillows. They are such a fun pop of color out here. I love the blue. It goes along perfectly with this outdoor space. Pillows are great because if you're sitting in an outdoor space for a long period of time, you wanna be comfortable. So pillows are great for that. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure that if you do get some pillows for your outdoor that it's covered in some durable fabric. Make sure it's an outdoor fabric that can withstand all of the elements that come along with being outside. So pillows are a great way to enhance that functionality and comfort of your space outside. Another way to keep comfortable outside for long periods of time is by making sure that you've got some blankets outside. I like to bring a basket full of blankets outside when I entertain, especially in the evening time. That way people can cozy up in these blankets, stay comfortable, and keep warm. Now it doesn't really cool down a whole lot here in Florida during the summer in the evening time, but I know in the majority of places it does. I put my blankets in a large basket that has handles on it, that way I can move it in and out of the house. You can also put towels in baskets like these, just to fill them up. It's a great and convenient way to organize your towels. You can easily bring them in and out of the house. Once everybody's done using your towel, you can put it in the basket, take it to your laundry room, and put everything in the washing machine. So baskets are a great way to organize some textiles outside, your blankets, your towels, and it can also be a great way to bring in some color and overall just make your space feel just a little more luxurious. You could also get some smaller baskets to organize your toys. You could put all your pool toys in here, your Frisbees, some games. You could even store some refreshments in baskets during a cookout. There's a lot of things you can do with baskets. You can use some woven ones like this or just get some plastic ones at the Dollar Tree. Those are really easy to clean and you can get some pretty decently sized bins and baskets at the Dollar Tree. So if you wanna organize your outdoor space, using baskets are a fantastic idea. Let's talk about the number one way to make your space feel more luxurious. It is to keep it clean. <laughs> That is a dilemma here because we've got so many kids and so many activities and obviously we've got rain and dirt and all kinds of other things. So keeping your outdoor space clean is, it's a problem, right? We've got to keep on it all the time. But when you do, gosh, does it look amazing? So if you're having a hard time getting the motivation or the energy to really want to get out there and clean, I have some suggestions for you. 
plan a party because if you have a party and people are coming over, guess what? You're gonna clean that outdoor space. And guess what I had to do? I had to do a YouTube video in order for me to really roll up my sleeves and get to work out here. But what I did do was I recruited my family to help, which is what you can do too. Got my boys helping me. Good activity for a Saturday afternoon, right? Get out and get some chores done. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's important to have your kiddos help clean up. I want to instill in my kids hard work and by participating in chores around the house, that's a great way to instill one of those values. So get your family involved in helping you clean up. That way it doesn't all fall on your shoulders and you feel like you have to do it yourself. So we scrubbed down the patio, we scrubbed down the chairs, the tables, all kinds of other things to really make this place sparkle and shine. After a long winter and spring, your space can get pretty dirty. And so just get the broom out, clean up everything. It will make your space look a hundred times better, just like mine did when we were finished cleaning up. I hope you like these 50 ways to make your home and outdoors look expensive on a budget. If you like this video and want to see more like it, I would love to have you subscribe so I can share those with you. Thank you so much for watching.